What my work is about is trying to promote something that I call the neo-Aboriginal life way. And you break that word down, neo-Aboriginal, it's looking at the new indigenous person. And it's trying to reclaim some of the things that we can see existed in indigenous and traditional cultures, like awareness, self-reliance, health of all things, um, a deep nature connection. I teach ancestral life ways. So these are the things that many people call primitive skills or survival skills. And those are things like shelter building and fire making, uh, hunting weapons and traps, but also foraging and medicinal plants and using things as cordage, dyes, adhesives, and all of the other things that we need to accomplish when we're living on the landscape. What I'm trying to do is to actually promote, in many ways, nature immersion, because we find out that it's not just beneficial for our health, but it's in fact vital for our health. This neo-Aboriginal life way has come about by a recognition that we're infused with about seven million years of hominid evolution. That's the length of time that we've been kind of a separate lineage from the rest of you know, the kingdom of life. We're genetically extremely similar to humans that lived even 50,000 years ago. There's very little difference between us in terms of our base genes. It's affected our anatomy, our psychology, our emotional being, if you will, and we can't just abandon it all. You know, many people really want to see modern humans as something very different and, if you will, divorced from nature. And when we abandon all of that history of deep immersion in nature, we find that we run into all kinds of health problems, whether that's cardiovascular disease, neurovascular disease, cancer, diabetes, arthritis, even children now with high rates of autism, food allergies, asthma, childhood cancer, incredibly on the rise. These are things that um, medical anthropology has shown for the most part did not exist in many indigenous cultures. So it's within humans to live long lives free of chronic disease. Professionally, I work um, as a plant taxonomist, so that's someone who studies the identification and classification of plants. Also pertinent to this discussion is the work that I do with my own business, the Delta Institute of Natural History. As a botanist here at the Delta Institute, I focus primarily on foraging and medicinal plants and other ways that we utilize plants in sustainable living. My strategy has always been to use modern scientific information, because that's extremely helpful, but to find the union between that and the observations that we have of indigenous and traditional cultures. And when we find overlapping evidence, we can present a much stronger picture for what might be beneficial to our health. And this is an approach that's rarely done. Find healthy populations and observe what did they eat or what community did they experience? What rites of passage did they perform? And it's really important because we have very similar physical, emotional, and spiritual needs that 
aren't really being met in most modern societies. Really, people get completely overwhelmed. This causes cancer. That causes diabetes. This is bad for you. No, it isn't. Well, maybe it is. My baby's toys have something in them. And what happens is they go, I'm done. I'm not going to worry about any of it. Life is too short. And they essentially turn off to all of this stimulus that's coming in. And if you think about it, that is a practice that would have gotten indigenous people killed. If they stopped paying attention to their environment, there would have been any number of things that could have happened to them. And we could, in fact, say that maybe there are some big corporations, big pharmaceutical companies that would just prefer people get overwhelmed with that information and just turn off to it all. And I'll encourage people not to do that. Their health relies on them being aware and digging for information. Their children, their grandchildren's health, because they have to remember they are leaving the world in a better or worse place for their next of kin. Many people really feel that their fate has been set. Once their genetics have been laid down, they're stuck to a train track on the car and they have to follow that path regardless of where it goes. Um, And I don't believe that because we know, for example, that we can alter our gene expression. I really love for people to know that you can jump off that track or you can pull the bar and derail onto or detour onto a different track. You're not bound to a particular fate, even whatever that medical fate that your parents um, may have dealt with. And we can do that through uh, deep nutrition, positive experiences, exposure to the elements, solid and beneficial community of people that are really looking out for your best interest. Part of reclaiming our health is undoing the great forgetting that has occurred where we can literally do very little for ourselves anymore. Uh, Everything's imported from a distant land, which includes most of our food, and we've lost that ability to be completely self-reliant and to use our own landscape to support our health. So I'm really hoping to encourage people to jump into a sustainable life way where they're using place-based technology, which is a fancy way of saying they're using what comes from their own landscape to benefit their lives, and in turn, they end up benefiting those organisms that support them. This is something that has a name. Many authors refer to it as rewilding. And because people hear the term wild, they automatically think that it is about returning to the woods, living in various bark shelters, and not being able to experience any part of modern society ever again. That's not what rewilding is about. Rewilding should be thought of as a trajectory. Anybody can be somewhere on that path. And for some people, it might involve extended living in wilderness situations. But for others who may have very little information about diet and nutrition and doing things for themselves, it might literally mean moving away from conventionally raised produce to more organic heirloom produce that still has its seeds found within the fruit. And of course, continuing on that trajectory, we could see that wild plants would be maybe an ultimate goal, but not everyone's going to get there. And we don't have to get there all at once. It took many generations for us to forget what we knew about our landscapes, and it's going to take a lot of generations to regain that back. I really hope to be able to take people to a point where when they look out into the wild, they don't see a wall of green, but to be able to tease that apart and understanding how they can benefit your lifestyle. We really have at this time period a real deep need for awareness, and it's just going to be vital that people start opening back up and remembering you can't change your life all in one fell swoop in one day, but we do it bit by bit piece by piece, by taking in information that we can use to affect positively our health. Petals broke from tips of roses hidden underneath my arm All the framed different poses of places I'll soon forget